Hi guys, uh, it's my chit chat. Uh, the, I call it the chit chat with the Eloquence and One of Sports. My name is Ida Fimat, US Yogane. And I have with me on the chit chat today uh, an amazing guy. And you know, his profile is, is, you know, sort of very, very long. First, he's currently a coach. He's a Portacord boy, like I am, even though I'm a worry boy, but I'm also a Portacord boy. I was born in Portacord um, some years ago. He was among the founding members of a club called Babanawa Football Club. And I am connected to that club, one way or the other. Uh, he's also part of Sharks of Portacord. I am connected, you know how it is. And then Premier Brewers, the Wyoming National, Bendel Insurance, LKS Lords. Stone Mill, OFK, Bograd, uh, Volin Lusk, one club that I almost signed for, but I didn't sign for. Akva Miniv, uh, Zakpatia, Ugzirot. I don't know what, how they call it, too, but it's currently based in Ukraine. It was uh, Asna Kev, uh, uh, part of the coaching crew of Asna Kev recently. He is a UEFA licensed coach. It was in the Squad, I don't know if you guys remember, but in 1998, African Cup of Nations qualifiers against Burkina Faso, it was a sub. It was also part of the Nigeria 99 FIFA World Youth Championship squad. I, I, I don't know if you guys remember all of that anyway, but I'm talking about no other than my friend and my brother, Eddie Dombray. Eddie Dombray, welcome to my chit chat. Oh, thanks for having me on your show. All right, uh, there is uh, a whole lot to talk about. We're going to go back to go forward. And uh, so many, there's going to be drama in this conversation because this is two brothers talking. This is not like I'm interviewing you, but it's just the two of us having a chat and catching up on the past. And then we're going to look at the future. So let's start with Port uh, Harcourt. Let's go back to the beginning. Port Harcourt. Talk to me about the Port Harcourt that you grew up in. Actually, I wouldn't say I grew up in Portaco, you know. I would basically say I grew up in Wari. Arax. Yeah, you know, born in Portaco, but didn't stay there much because my dad was a soldier and he moves around, you know. He moved to Abiyakuta, then to Wari, you know, so I would say I grew up in Wari. Okay, so talk to us about like Going to time. visit Portaco once in a time. Okay, talk to me about your time when you guys formed that club, Club of Anawa. Okay, we in the barracks, we used to play like every evening, 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. We go to play, you know, these two aside every day. So we had Major Suleiman, of course. Then he was Major, you know, before Colonel and that, which you know very well. So he now formed a team called the Wanawa Babes. And then, then we stayed. And the core players were, most of us were from the barracks. So we went like nine of us. And then later it was reduced to about six, like that. Okay, so let's travel now. From that moment, you realize that, at what point do you realize that, look, with this football, I can make something out of it. You know, because at that time there was no money in football. So it was just play for the fun of it. But at what point did yeah. you realize that, well, I think I can do something with this football? Well, actually, you're very correct. I think it was when it took us to Baba our Babes. You know, we're giving, but he paid us, you know, but he gave us 180 naira as salary, you know. And it was you. you know, That's less than 180, 180. 180 naira. Yeah. Okay. So it was huge. You know, it's something we do for fun. And now they're giving you money, you know. And you see people applauding you that, oh, you're good, you know. So then that was when he hit me that, yeah, I can do it over again. So how did you move from Babanawa to, was it Premier Brewers that your first pro team? Data Star Ogeli. Okay, Data Star, yeah, hey, I forgot. Yes, it was Data Star in this story. That's why you met uh, Blessing Kaku first, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So how did Data Star come into the picture? Okay, so we, from Banana, we came back to Worry. You know, they were kind of so far, crisis, financial crisis, I guess, you know. So we came back to worry and didn't play for like a year. Continue playing the barracks. So you know those days the uh, soldiers used to go to um, PTI Stadium for yeah. like security, you know, for NMPC. 
and they do that for Stadium for MPA and DSC and Data Star too. So we had one uh, lecturer at Abara. He used to play with us. So he came back one day and he told us like, hey guys, four of you, he called for for Seiko. On Monday, I want you guys to go to Ugeli for trials. I talked to the coach. Wow. That was it. We were not prepared for it, you know, but <laughs> then you cannot say you're, then that, you cannot say you're not prepared now. That's military scouting. <laughs> exactly. Scouting, you scouting by you order. Yes, say you have to go. So it was like a Wednesday, Thursday. So on Monday you have to resume. So that means we need to be in Ogeli by Sunday night, you know, Sunday. Yeah. So and then but one good thing was that he told the coach or management, he told them that I'm bringing four players for you. If they are not good enough, send them back. You know, that's what he told them. If they're not good enough, send them back. It's not like these days when people just say, uh, write a letter to Mr. Duffy, take this boy. You know, it wasn't like that. He said, give them the chance. If they're not good, send them back. So that's how we went. It worked out in the test stars. So how was the trials like? Because these days people don't really go for trials. Back in the day, the biggest achievement is so like you dust your boots and you're able to leave your house and go for trials. It was the biggest thing. Forget whether you play or you did not play. That you yes. went for trials. God. You can come back and tell an entire lifetime story about trials. But if you see the boots of the prayer, you know, you do trials with other non-professionals, people coming from everywhere. And then Every if they select you, if they select you, maybe they keep selecting and dropping people. At some point, you will not train with the main players. Then you not exactly. see your first idea of a professional football club is the fact that everybody was wearing the same uniform. Their boots yeah. were better than your rubbish boots that you brought there. They were all looking, you know, like there was a level. Let me put it this way. There was levels. So when you see them, like they come out from balls, Hey God, this guy will be like this. The FPC alone is what you want. It's not the money. Like, like let me just join this secret court. This clique of FPC oriented exactly. people. Man, times have changed. So how was the trials like at Data Stars? Uh, so we got to Data Stars and we normally train in the, the quarters. Yeah. Yeah, but they took us to one primary school, a quad primary primary school. Ika primary primary school. So that was where we had the screening. There were lots of people, like you said, lots of people. So if you are, it's, I would not say, like we say, say get strong mind. No, if you are not somebody that loves the game or you enjoy playing it, you will give up. Because you see some people with Barcelona jersey up and down. You see AC Milan jersey up and down. Let me, I get one jersey, they write zero zero for back. <laughs> Honestly, my guess is zero zero for my and I was the smallest, just like this, you know, slim with big eggs, you understand? So they were like no beers at all, no bros. I know that really spirit that time, spirit to make it grow. Fun. So we go there and they were just the trials were all about uh, like five aside, you know, to separate. So we played the first day and I was taking they did not even write my name like, <clears throat> excuse me, like Eddie Dombay. My name was zero zero because of my yes. <laughs> yeah. Plus, there were so many people, and so nobody had time to come find your full name, you know? Okay, that yeah. was zero zero. So that's how we go. Like you said, they drop, nuclear come, they drop. We're more than a month, you know, get it, more than a month to spend. So they drop, and four of us, we're still there. We're still there. Gradually, we're going until we started playing friendly games now. So, actually, four of us who were very small. We had the senior of us. He was with uh, Scrabbles. So, he goes for offshore and all that. So, he was the one that had the money to like sponsor us, transport, you know. So, we played against uh, NYSC friendly game. After they dropped him. So uh, we left with three people. No more funding. Me, Felix Levi, and one Eddie of Fodile. 
So Eddie was a rifle back, Felix was a goalkeeper, I was a midfielder. So there's a progress then, like you say, the main players started coming. The yeah. main players started coming. So we on trials that are doing well, we play against them, you know. We play against them, they take. So luckily I was now like joining the first team. You know, I joined the first team. If if one of the midfielders don't play, I would join them. Uh, unfortunately, two joints. And then one, Solomon Yondo, you know him now. Yeah. Solomon Yondo, good rifle back, you know. Right, right for back, yeah. Very skillful too. Yeah, so he came from Benin, he just came. My brother, we're starting training about 9, 9 a.m. So we just came, 8.45 like that. Oh, I just said that, change clothes. I just said, hey, right, Yondo, come, enter. That was how Solo embarrassed Felix Levi that day. Jesus. Right. From his full back, full back, he was going up front, doing everything. So Felix Levi considered four goals. So he yeah. was asked to go. And now it was left for me and uh, Eddie to Eddie. For the so finally they dropped the D2, so I was alone. So that's the rest, it. The rest, as they say, is history. Uh, but there's one other common history that we both share, and uh, that common history is uh, Imama Mapakabo, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we both, we both have so much to talk about Imama. Imama is, you know, in the era of Imama, Imama is like the most erratic goalkeeper I've seen in the Nigerian league scene. And this is a Nigerian league scene that I've had with experience. Edward Ansa, Andrei mm -hmm. Komogbe, Lemi Issa, when Lemi Issa was Lemi Issa, and, and you know, all of these people. And all of a sudden, we have this guy. Now, the, the problem with Imama, and let me bring him on board this conversation, uh, the problem, okay, that's Imama, the Imama that I'm talking about. <laughs> Eddie, look at your face, look at your face. Eddie, just imagine your face. <laughs> Eddie, don't be, you are finished. <laughs> Eddie, this is this one coming. Didn't know I was bringing you up on. So, uh, like I was saying, we, 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 this Imama guy, the, the problem, not this Imama that I was saying now, not this bishop or sultan. That Imama there was very small, very short. The first time in my life that I was seeing that a short man was in goal. But, Eddie, the problem was, when you look at Shaq Sim or you look at Mama in goal, the first talk in your head, even if you're a defender, you start thinking, I want to play attack today. Because, I mean, this guy, I go score him now, not be this one. I go play all ball for him. I go play all ball for him. You know, you start saying, I go give him, I go give him a drop in. I go give him a drop in. Drop in. I go give him a drop in. Then, the game starts, you overlap, you play short, you do this, you play lobbing, and then the best time of a football match, there's a penalty, and you're like, okay, let me go and play this kick. And then, Aye, Mama, don't go there. Don't, and then don't go there, please. No, I want to go there. <laughs> That's the place I want to go. That's the place I want to go. And then there's a penalty kick, and you'll be like, you know what? Let me just go and play this. Anybody can play this one. And then Emma will turn his back. I don't know if you remember this incident. Too. Hey, mama will turn his back to, to you. We first use his face to face the net and use his back to face you. And then the ref will be like, play, he will say, play on. And then a hey, mama will still catch the ball. Another thing a mama does, I, I mean, I used to hate him all because he will give you a lot of pressure. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. They will cross corner. A mama will catch the ball like this. Like, <laughs> but there's a shared experience between the two of you that I want to bring to this conversation. Eddie Dombray, you had the guts of bragging that you will play five penalties and Imama will not catch one. Hold on. Imama, tell me that story. Tell me your side of that story. Uh, Eddie, Eddie still owe me now. Eddie still owe me. He knows it. <laughs> I retired him completely, even in, even in retirement. I still retired him. Okay, so what really happened? Give us the story. Friend, yeah. We want to know what happened. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, we're still waiting for. Oh, Imama stepped up. Okay, so Eddie, Eddie, let me bring you up on this. What happened? So, you know, uh, what happened was that 
Then I just came from Poland, you know. Mm. So I went to I visit well. Bros. LKS Lodge. Yeah, so I went to visit Bros. Ah, before leaving the Nigerian League, I played some penalties, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So we just in the mama's place, you know. <laughs> Money, you just just thing, you know. <laughs> you know and just say, then he brought up the issue of penalty, you know. I said, I beg, bros, I'll play five penalty, I beg, you know, cash one. <laughs> the guy don't say, he said, ah, don't be in a meal. Me, mama, mama. I said, bros, you know, bros, leave that thing. Leave that. And you know, he lives close to city center. Close to city center. Yes, he's close to city center. Now, time, boy, now. Now, they be time, now. Now, they get for that cut. <laughs> I said, oh, I said, okay, now, bros, enter car mode drive, go now. He said, no car, leave car, we'll walk go. And he was wearing combat shorts then, combat shorts. I remember. Hey, Mama, the mama used to like that brand combat shorts, eh? That I used to go and buy in the uh, OME, OME market. <laughs> OME and market. Oh, my man. one. My one. Borough Park. Opposite Borough Park or OME. That's where I used to go. This guy, so, oh, let's so go like, back my table. Right? <laughs> no, but I scored though. We started. You sure? Yeah, wait, uh, wait, start. Are you sure? You remember, they talk my story. Yeah, they talk your story. I talk your story. Okay. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yes. Okay. The, the thing was that he will not, he will not save three. He will not save three. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, I went first penalty. I scored. Mm -hmm. And then I said, Ah, bros, he never said it today. I'll go finish you. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Your bride don't finish. He now said, Now, the second one, he now said, I have to put her here. So he <laughs> to, but not try you. If you put her there, I'll cash her. You know? So, you know, it was my play. You know, I said, Okay, since you want it there, I will put it there. You know? <laughs> you forget that a psychologist. I, I hit it hard there, yeah, you know? He said it. So we are now one one now. One go was saved. Second one. I, I wanted to change now. I said no. If I change, it will cash me. So I will not change. I will go there. I go there again. Pam, it cash. What? He won. So he won. But the thing was that he made it. He made it look effortlessly. You know, it was not like he was diving, full diving. You know. Nah, that is actually why that's actually why I brought Imama. Imama, why is yes. it that in your life you make everything look effortless? Even when you make a bad situation, whether you get fired or you lose a game, you make it look like you know me. And a lot of people will not understand this, but because I mean I know you from Sharks till now. I saw you become a coach. You told me a season before that, Matt. Again, next season I win this league, and you know he was talking about a team that has not won the league for thirty years. We're not talking of maybe he was coaching the Imba or he was coaching Kano mm. Pillars. And when he says that, you be like, okay, management or bless like, management or tell us something we don't know. So he's bragging. Yes. He's coaching one of the useless team in the league. <laughs> Enugu Rangers. Enugu Rangers. And this season, and he's saying that he will win the league next season. The referees have referees have made up their mind to destroy Mama. Referees have made up their mind to destroy Mama. And he said to me, Matt, we're well, on the phone, Matt. You know what? Go and write it down. Next season, I win the league. Even if they like, let them bring referees from Kovu. And I'll be like, hey, Mama, now your reputation you was poor. So, and then he said to me. I'm not saying it. Put it on your show. Put it on radio. And I was still in brain at the time. <laughs> and then I said, well, since you say make I put that. So normally, you know when you record somebody, you edit those parts out of it. So yes, I wanted yes. to I wanted to have a disclaimer. But then he's my guy. I don't want to be the guy who for my guy hand. Yes. But then there was this thing I know about Imama and confidence. Like, Imama tell you, like, I don't save an worry. And then he would do it. I remember I went to Boku. Imama said penalty, so the chairman uh, I don't care about the man. I say, hey, Mama, please, for us to go home, let them score. Before, before, yes. before they kill us here. Before we die before here. Referee, even referee, the beggar. Okay? Before we die here, just let them score. We're not going to build them for their ground. You know, 
So I, 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 I went on air the next morning. I was filled with energy because I know I was talking. Oh, he mama, I'm a packer boy. He mama, he mama, he mama has made a promise. He, you know, I was just bragging. And then I played the voice. And then people start calling me and insulting me. Like, why would I do that? It's unprofessional. Why would I? I said, what is that? I know what I said. So it was not my reputation tied to his own. If he failed, I two of us. Yes, yes. Guess yes. what? That season, for the first time in the history of Nigerian football, and correct me if I'm wrong, Imama's own game, 19 of them were broadcast. First time that a yeah. club had yeah. all its own game on television. And not only that, nine or seven of his away game were also on television. By, the, the, by default, that means you're not supposed to win the league. Because what it means yeah, is... You're not supposed. Yeah. The the home games that are on television means officiating will be fair. A way team can beat you. Yes. The away games that you are going to is going to be fair. There is no you cannot use your money. Your money cannot come to play. But Imama won the league. Not only that, the cathedral, which is Namdazi, it used to be an Namdazi Stadium, but you know when they brought in a bishop, it became a cathedral. Imama <laughs> won the league. Now, Imama, please tell me the babalawo that did your jazz. In Rangers, I don't want to know how you uh, lost that with the under the national team because I know that one was always going to be a failure. I, I, I told you, I said once I'm a <laughs> fail at calf, they were going to use you guys as scapegoat. To you remember, I had that conversation with you in Abuja. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. exactly that was what happened. That once I'm a youth, don't fall in for calf. All Nigerian teams, they will use them for scapegoat. They're not going to qualify for any competition. And people thought I was joking. I said, even the ones who qualify, they will knock out. And that's exactly what happened. So, Imama, tell me the story of what happened in Enobu. How were you able to achieve well, that thing? All through my life, I think I believed two persons. The first one I believed is God Almighty. And the second person I believed in all of this world is myself. You know, I believe nothing is impossible. The, the thing about me is that, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I used to be in Go, I climbed a whole lot. But I was always looking at myself like a magician. The magician is pulling a trick on his right hand, but he's, he's doing everything on his left hand. So it was like me giving you an illusion that, look, it is not, it's not possible, but it's possible. I put in a whole lot of work that most people don't understand. It's only people that are close to me. You know, I, 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 when I used to play, sometimes I train about four times, five times a day. If you know, know. me, you know, know that, yes. I know. You know, I put in a whole lot of work. I, I, and I believe that there's no magic to it. I don't know about a bad God, like I always say. Um, I put in so much work, and you that just sit there. And work is not just about going to the pitch all the time, but it has to be upstairs too. You know, I try to, try to study people. I try to see, you know, predict them, guess them, look at what they're going to do, you know, go back to the pitch and ask people to do it. You get what I'm saying? There were times even I even put little boys in goal and I tell the players, play a penalty. I'll tell the little boy, this is where he's going to play the ball to, go to that place. And the boy will just go there and just take the ball. And they'll say, ah, I didn't know, you know. I'm not at a point in time in my career, people were even running away. They say, I no let them. If you touch the ball, don't touch it again, or you don't put jazz, you know. But it was the trick of it, you know, because... At the point in time, I kept the game in jaws, and people were like, ah, this guy is a wizard, a devil. You know, I was angry. But I pulled a save, you know, that only me knew it was possible. You know, the guy was so sure. I think first of all, he was so, so sure that he had knocked the ball there. I knew that that was what he wanted to do. All I needed to do was to get my feet right and just move away. And I just reacted to my instincts and just really I pulled a save. Uh, um, sorry, uh, unbelievable. Excuse me, excuse me, bros. Yes. Uh, I want to add to, this, uh, add to this. You see, I believe uh, Imama for all this uh, is because as a goalkeeper who has played before, outfit player, you were outfit player too before, so I think that helped and made you a better keeper. What do you think? But, but Imama, Imama is, that, is that true? Is that true? Because as it does that help you if you were formerly an outfit player and then you become a goalkeeper? Does it help? Mama? Eddie, Eddie, I didn't get, I didn't get that. There was a bit of a natural problem. Okay, so Eddie, Eddie, you were saying something. Repeat it. Yeah. Hello? Okay, oh, we lost him. Okay, we lost him. Now let me come back to you. So Eddie, 
eventually he played in the Nigerian League. Okay, Imama is coming yeah. back now. Uh, okay. Imama, uh, Eddie was yeah. something. Eddie? Yeah, so, uh, Bros Imama, I was saying yeah. that one of the factors that made you a better goalkeeper was because you were an outfit player before. What do you think about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, you know, you see, you see, when I used to play, I I was um, an adventurer kind of, you know. I tried to do things that um, people, you know, ordinarily wouldn't say. Okay, this was going to do it. So at all times, a lot of this I did, I did from my head. So it became an advantage for me when I finally turned to a goalkeeper. And you see, I am about five eight thereabout. People don't usually think, look at me as a, how can somebody that's a 5'8 in a field where it's, uh, you know, yes. over 60 people, you know. Then, imagine, the, the underrated, the that underrated. That's what I kept going for, Imama. You had David Ugodiga, Big Dave. Yeah. He, yeah. This, this guy is a Goliath. And then you had, Imama, you see you guys just, you know, you just. No, true. Think about it. Shatz has always had big, big goalkeepers. And then all of a sudden, this guy just showed up. And God. Yeah. Imama was more popular than the strikers or the midfielders of that team. So, Eddie, let's come back to you. <laughs> Eddie, let's come back to you. Why we're, we're holding Imama, please don't go yet. Eddie, what happened when you went to Poland? Because Poland was the most difficult place to go to at the time you went to Poland. The language, racism, a whole lot. How were you able to cope? No, you can't really say it was difficult, you know, because Olisadebe has already established there. Kenneth Zegu had already established there, you know. So it was difficult in the sense that any player that comes has to be in their level because they were doing well in their clubs, has to be in their level. So when I came to LKS, uh, we already had Darlington Modegui LKS. We had a Hamlet Wunko Shai Hekaes. So I think they made, okay, I don't want to talk about Hamlet, but Darlington made things a bit kind of soft for me, easier for me. Because they were, they were going to play against uh, Monaco, in the, uh, then now Europa League. Yeah, you have so I had to go with the second team, like part of my trials the first day. Yeah, so I was doing these passing things as we do in Nigeria, you know, these passing things. No, that is it. Just come and say, Eddie, no pass. If you get chance, go alone. You know? So, but for racism then, uh, which was very big, we had two teams, like like Potako, Eagle Smith then and Sharks, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you play for Sharks, automatically Eagle Smith fans hate you. That was how it was in, in Poland. Uh, yeah. So the racist chance you get are from those other side. From your side, you are like loved. So it wasn't difficult. Okay, so Imama, Imama. Yeah. Uh, I, I always wanted to ask you this question. 1985, and a lot of people don't know that, you made that team to the World Cup. Right? Yeah. How was the selection made? You don't live in Lagos. You, I mean, you're a schoolboy. How did a, a schoolboy goalkeeper from Portacourt make the almighty first national team that's going to represent Nigeria and Africa at the first FIFA competition? How did you do that? I, I, my first competition I actually played in all my life was, um, I think, the Houston competition in Portacourt. I think it was called the Ramat Cup. Okay. You know, uh, came from school one day to attack for a team that was owned by the then Commissioner for Works, Endeley. And um, I think our goalkeeper didn't show up that day. So I think they got talking. They said, that who will keep it, whatever. So somebody whispered to them that I, this guy gets in goal. is something else. So I just told them, look, I'm going to just help on that video. Next time, I'm going to bring that team again. It's not going to bring some people up front, <laughs> you know. So I kept going. And we were playing against one of the big teams in Port Harcourt. And it was like, they just couldn't score me. So everybody was saying, ah, we well, just want small boy keep, want small boy keep. And, you know, my size then, and everything, they just, ah, it's not possible. Like, 
school, go scrap, shoot the ball from afar, you know? And you shoot the ball, I go effortlessly. And I'll just, I'll do my thing. So the game finally went into shootouts and I saved four penalties. You know, all think it's a mistake. We got into the quarterfinals. I think I saved about three. Semi-finals, I saved four. The finals two also. So it was like me taking my team through. So everybody was like, so they went and told uh, our coach then, Monday Sinclair, that, that you attack and you got a wonderful goalkeeper. So he came and watched us play in one game. And the next I went to the, uh, our Gino Shark training. Hello. Yeah, the next know. day, I, I, I went to our Gino Shark training. I went with my outfield uh, player's outfit. Monday Sinclair told me, my friend, if you don't get in goal. And I used to tell the goalkeepers there, or I'll be at the ref. I keep us all for now. They say, come on, it's easy to keep. You know, so I, I, I we went to, we finally represented River State and we went to Lagos. And I think fortunately for me, I was um, voted best youth goalkeeper of, uh, of the country then. And I remember later Raymond King, may he so rest in perfect peace. So, you know, people went and told him, I ah, need to see this small boy with a kick like you. So like he was saying, ah, where is this boy? So he came to watch one of our games. And he said, wow. So till he passed on, he used to call me the crown prince of showmanship because he says he's the king, you know. And I was the crown prince of showmanship. And the most important thing about me is that whatever it is I, I do, I don't exist in it, but I live in it. So I try to have fun. Yeah. So work was like always fun, you know. And living my life has gotten me to where I have. But then... Plenty of work, you know. People think I'm just a joke. Sometimes people underrate because of my size, or you know, they don't they don't know the capacity that I have. But you have been able to. Mama's mama, mama, a big engine. The Ferrari is mama's a big engine. Yeah. So it's 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 nice. It's so nice. Let, me, let me post you there. I'll come back to you, uh, Eddie. Okay. Eddie. Yeah. So you came into this LKS team. They already have a very good squad. I remember that time they were playing well. They were playing continental football. Mm -hmm. And within a short while, you became a regular in the team. And I think there was this talk of the other Nigerians were, were ganging up so that the other people that are playing in your position don't play well so that you play. What happened? How did you get into the first team? Because, I mean, I, the, the coach, the coach, the boy that was playing in your position, he was brought in by the coach, but then you displaced him. What happened there? You know, you know, people don't know me, you know, like I went to Poland as a striker, not a midfielder. Yeah. You know, it was difficult for me. And okay, I had a striker then. The first striker, Marek Saganowski. He was then 17, 18, very good. He had an accident, a motorbike accident. So he wasn't playing. So I was playing as a lone striker. I'm like, Tuonkosha was a striker. They sent him to the second team. And Darlington, I played only one game with Darlington. Darlington had already left for Germany. For Germany. So, there was nothing like a gang go I just came into the first team from the moment I came in. Because I was on trials when I was invited for the Super Eagles as a home base player. You know, that was a big one for me, for me you know. So they, I think I had some respect from that invitation I got to the Super Eagles. So when I came back, I just started playing immediately. Okay, so uh, Imam, if I come to you now. So let's let's say with the national team now. You came in, you played in that friendly, uh, that qualifiers against Burkina Faso, right? Yeah. You came in as a sub. But the main thing was, was the 1999 World Cup, FIFA Youth Championship. Yeah. What happened that that team didn't do well? Because you guys have they have you, Julius Agawa, Joseph Yobo, uh, Raibu, uh You know there was a, a, a good squad put together, but it just didn't gel. What happened? No, honestly, if you I can't really pinpoint, but if you look at our squad, we had individual talent. You know, I think we had a talent. We have talent that could have matched that Chief 87 squad individually, you know. But as a team, it didn't gel maybe because we were 
of a kind of confidence in ourselves. You know, we're too sure because we are going to play Costa Rica in the first game. Come on, we're Nigerians now in Lagos. Costa Rica wouldn't be, you know. And then it was just say, I'm just sorry, saying, bro, the body Twenty minutes into that game, Agawa don't score. No, that, yeah, yeah, we played 1-1. One, one, yeah. Yes, I was 1-1. One, one. The body language tells that these guys are they're too confident, you understand? Babangida, we had Babangida Barcelona players from uh, Belgium players, players from Germany, you know? I, I, really, I don't know what went wrong. Because when I look at that team, you have Shitu, you have Garba, you have yourself, you have, I mean... And then when the group ended and then Paraguay was top, Nigeria was second, I began to worry like uh, we're not as good as I thought to. But then, you know, everything just fell apart. So uh, coming forward, coming forward, let's, let's fast track now to your days as a coach. What inspired the decision for you to become a coach? Because you are my mama, I can understand that your mama was always going to be a coach. I knew that from the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, because Imama likes to lead. He likes to take charge. You know Imama now? Imama had knowledge. He was always teaching people. He was always arguing with you. He was always telling you something. So I knew this guy would end up as a coach. Eddie Dombraya on the other side. Imama, if you remember, Eddie Dombraya on the other side is a very quiet, conservative, reserved kind of guy. When but highly opinionated. Yes. He no, he not too much now. <laughs> So, where did you decide that? I, you know, because I felt Eddie Dombraye and people like Blessing Kaku, they were going to be the same. When they retired, they just retired quietly. When did you decide that you wanted to be a coach? Mm. Hello? Uh, yes, I said, when did you decide that you wanted to be a coach? Okay, it was um, uh, during my... Okay, even when I was in the you know, we have, uh, our goalkeeper coach then, Waha Baruna, he one day told me, he told me that, I did I see you like somebody, as your career goes by age, you'll be playing backwards behind, you know. And actually, as towards the end of my career, I started playing as a central defender, you know. So in that position, you got just like the situation with Imama when he became a goalkeeper, he kind of anticipate things, he anticipate things ahead, you know. I started seeing the game differently, you know. So with two central defenders, he should charge for me. But sometimes I go before him because I anticipated it already. So going from there, in Poland too, I had a situation like that where my coach, he asked me for my opinion about two players. A striker, somebody to partner with me. He asked me, who do I prefer? I say, I can say it's your, it's your call. So okay, I have these two players. I want to play one of them. Okay, then I already become a midfielder. I'm now a midfielder. So he wanted a other strike. So I told him that look at this guy. He's friends to this striker that's playing now, but he's always on the bench. I said, why don't you just play two of them since they are friends? They will complement each other anyhow. You know, he talked about the, the, uh, on March day, he called me for March day, he said, I've decided that that boy will play, two of them will play. You know, you know, we footballers now, the guy was my friend too. So I just told him that in the dressing room, I said, you are starting today. And he was like, I come on there. So when they called him to start, he was happy and he played and played well. We won that day. So the coach now told me that just, just pat me on my shoulder, you know. Just say, one day you'll be a good coach. One day, you know, just smile, you know. So those little things, you know, they come to you once in a while, you understand? Yeah. But I can't really pinpoint to what made me decide to want to be a coach. But for sure, I never wanted to be a football agent. For sure, never. Mama. And Duffy, let, me, let, let, let me shock you a little bit. Okay. You know, Cody was the farthest thing on my mind. In fact, when I actually stopped playing in 99, I was still in Pillars. I just packed my bag one day and said, man, I'm, I'm done with it. You know? And everybody, ah, you're too young to stop the play. I said, no, let me get the talent. I won't go to my house. I didn't play here. 
you know, so that I, is just Imama for you. Say you know Eddie. That thing is yeah. and I'm get the talent. I don't want you to make it. That's Imama. No, you will just say it to your so, face. Ah. So I just I just packed my bag and everybody was saying, I said, look, the house on my give me one, I go check everything inside. I entered my vehicle and I drove out of Can. I went to Joe, spent some bit of time with my friends, the Mangoots, you know, and um, I left and I came back to Portacourt. After then, I just packed my bag and I said, I was headed to Ghana. I went back, to, I went to Ghana, I went to school. So I think I came to Nigeria sometime in 2002. And um, I just came to pick up a few things because I just finished my diploma then. I was supposed to go to Canada to, you know, continue my education. Then um, I heard that uh, Chief Adokia Messi Maka was looking for me. Seriously? You know, and I said, ah, why should this man be looking for me? Yes. Then my elder brother said, oh, well, come, let's go. I said, no, what am I going to look for? Uh, this? Do with the chief Amir Smaka. He said, No, let's go. So we went to his office and just truly said, ah. He was smiling and said, Ah, this man, this man should be smiling at me. We've had so much battles. You know, so <laughs> he said that they just got in a new coach and the coach that came in, which is uh, Kadri Kana, the man said, The only person that he wants to work with was me. I said, Ah, he's coach Kadri in this town. Yes. When did he come in? They said, A few days back. Then I thought, Chief Amir Smaka, then I need to see Gadri. So I went to his hotel and I asked him, I, I hear that you said you want to work with me. Why do you want to work with me? And he laughed. He said, young man, you know, when we work together in Canada, that you are very intelligent, you were able to read the game well, gave me advices that worked all the time. But I could not stand in front of people to tell them that you gave me advice. You are yeah, sound, yeah. you read really very well. And also, like you said, you are a leader of men. You know, you know how to motivate people. And Imam Manda, Imam can make and kill I know. This is Mama. <laughs> you know, so the funny part of it because I was so pissed, I was so angry with um, the game. I I I was I, 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 I was not having anything football. In fact, I was not listening to football news. I was not even opening the, the pages of the newspapers. I wasn't seeing anything about football. So the first that I even went for training was I went to the jean and a t-shirt. That was how I went, you know. To for training, we started working after a while, and uh, initially it was to me it was just a joke, you know. Let me just take it to this point, and I got to work with Amodu Shwaibu, may he so rest in peace, wonderful man, you know. And uh, later Solomon Obede to another great man. You see, so you see, I was privileged and fortunate to have worked under these people, and I uh, got to a point we worked. I worked with uh, Stanley Guma too. And um, I saw some things. I said, this one I coached, then I had to go to. I said, what was hindering me was um, coaching certification. So I said, fair and good. How do I get it? I have to go to the NIS. So that was how I went to the NIS and I got coaching certification. So people wanted to refer me as a goalkeeper coach. But I said, no, I stayed in the box too much on my playing career. And I want to lead. I want to be able to, I want my philosophy to come into play. I want my ideologies to come. Yes. So I refused to be tagged the goalkeeper. Oh, network technology helps you and it feels you at the same time. So, Eddie, uh, we have a very short time now. Uh, well, I think we'll see. Eddie, Eddie, are you there? Okay, I think I've lost the two of them at the same time. Maybe the technology problem now is on my end. I don't know. Uh, but naturally, uh, we're almost uh, at the end of this conversation. This is a conversation of 